Hey guys, it's Brett here with the Tuning School, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up your wideband in the new HB Tuners 3.0 software. Alright, before we get started, if you guys haven't seen our video on how to connect your wideband to your HB Tuners unit, then go ahead and click this link on the screen and watch that first. So today we're going to go over two ways to set up your wideband. The first being using HP Tuner's pre-configured widebands, which basically means they have a list of a bunch of different widebands that you basically can just click on and use and it'll work great. And then secondly, we're going to go over how to set up a custom wideband. This is for more applications where it's not in the list that HP Tuner's provides and a really common one that isn't in the list that HP Tuner's provides is actually the Daytona WeGo. Uh, widebands. So those widebands that you got from us, you'll actually have to use the custom defined setup in order to run those. But for everything else, pretty much you can use the pre-configured. So now let's head over to the scanner and check out how to actually set these things up. All right, now let's jump into how to set up your wideband in HP Tuners 3.0 software. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to set up a predefined wideband. So widebands that HP Tuners has already defined and has in their list of uh, widebands that you can choose from. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to right click in this channel section. We're going to select add channel. This channel selector pop-up window will appear. When it does, we can go down to this external inputs section and click on MPVI Pro. Uh, and then we can select the input that we are using on the MPVI Pro unit. So this directly correlates to that green plug on the side of your HP Tuners box. Uh, and one would be the terminal at the top, two, the one underneath it, three, four, and so on and so forth. So you're going to select whichever one you're using. Most of the time, it's usually input one, the topmost pin on that box. So we'll select that one, double click it. Once you've double click it, it'll appear back here. And so you can X out of here, and it's now in here. So now we need to actually tell it what that input is seeing. What is it being? What's the voltage input? What is it? You know, right at this point, it knows that something's there, but it doesn't know what it is. So to do that, we right click, click transform. Now at this point, we're able to select what we would, what we want to define this as. So we can go to air fuel ratio sensor, and we can select any of these predefined air fuel ratio sensors. So they have quite a few in here. Um, you can pretty much choose whichever one you're working with. So let's say that we're working with this AEM up here. All you do is you double click on it and it is now configured and set up properly and it'll be able to read. Alright, so now let's talk about how to set up a custom wideband. So this is setting up a wideband that isn't predefined in HP Tuner's list there. Um, a common one that you might run across is uh, the Daytona Sensors WeGo. Uh, that's obviously what we sell here at the Tuning School, so if you happen to have purchased one of those, it's not exactly in that list. So let's say that like you wanted to take your Daytona Sensors WeGo and have it read in the software. So what you can do in order to make that happen is we can right click in here again. So let's say that we already selected this input like we did before. Uh, so we already had an input in here. We went to add channel, we selected input one. So let's go to transform. Now we can go to air fuel ratio sensor. Just click one time on any of these in here. So let's click on this one. Now at this point, I can click up here on this copy to user defined icon at the top of the screen. By clicking on that, it'll take that information and put it down here. This is kind of a quick way to get the information down here. So at this point, you can change the, this function here to your wideband offset voltage. Now, to determine your wideband offset voltage, that sounds a little bit daunting, but uh, we have a spreadsheet that we've made for you guys that makes this really, really easy. Uh, it's available on our website uh, and through a link in this video as well. So if you come in here, all you have to do is go, my unit goes from 0 to 5 volts, and what it reads is, 10.3 and to 19.5 click enter and then this is our formula down here so 0 0.543 over 10.3 so now we can go back to our scanner we can go 0 0.543 over 10.3 so, and the values that I determined to put in here are found 
and the usually whatever instructions come with the wideband that you have, they're found in the the WeGo instructions. This is even information that you could get from the manufacturer of your wideband. Um, just ask them what the uh, ratio, like the readings, is the scale for your AFR reading, and they can give you that information if you do not know where to get it. So now that we've done that, we can go back here, click OK. Now our WeGo wideband will read perfectly with this HP Tuner's layout file. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you're able to learn something from it. If you have any questions on how to set up your wideband or if you have any issues, just feel free to give us a call at 727-264-8875. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.